John. Thank you, David. So I'm pretty excited about our next, um, everyone okay? Anyone freaking out? Everyone good? Okay, phone's off. Uh, yeah, the fun part starts now. Um, oh, thanks, sorry. So, whew, so I, I'm gonna take a little liberty on this one. EBA stands for the International Yacht Brokers Association. Um, I'm gonna say this because I believe it. Everyone in here is very important to global economies. Um, I don't say that lightly. I say that with utmost conviction that we drive destinations and we drive the economy of destinations in no other industry. Um, and I'm very proud to say that we are an industry. As such, we have now in our next panel, and I'm gonna go slow to make sure we're fully aware of how we impact global economies. We have Jill Dill from Bermuda Tourism Authority. You can clap, she's that good. Jill, where are you? Jill, good walk, good pace, good, doing good, smile works. Okay, from Bermuda Tourism Authority. Simone Bell from the Belize Tourism Board. Simone. Pedro Abdallah, Marina Bahia Golfito, Costa Rica, an IGY destination. And Bruce Walker, Blue Haven Marina, Turks and Caicos. So in any conversation, please have a seat, everyone. In any conversation, please understand that we as an industry impact global economies. And I think as David and all our other presenters, there is a complexity to our industry, there are rules, and there are also great opportunities for destinations that are looking not only just bring a boat to the dock, but have a real impact to their economies. So we've got four countries up here that are going to explain and give some details. So we have a great, um, two great pr uh, moderators for this session. We have Mr. Bob Saxon and we have Mr. Graham Lord who will be able to ask some very detailed questions. And I'm gonna say this, ask the tough questions. Everyone has a beautiful beach. Everyone has beautiful people. But I think what's important for new destinations is to understand the operations that charter brokers as professionals have to go through. So I will suffice it to say, and we will have present, we'll start with presentations, very brief presentations from each, supported by some video and content, and then Bob and Graham will ask the questions from here. But I'm gonna let each panelist go through. But I will keep you to time. You gotta keep it short and sweet because we know every country is beautiful, as is the US. We got beautiful people, they're all in this room. Mm -hmm. and, but we need to make sure we keep the time, and of course with your presentation there. So, AV guys are all set for this? Okay, we've got um, Jill first. Thank you. Well, hang on, hang on. Let me get up here. Sure. Graham. Good morning, everyone. I believe it's still morning, hopefully. Um, I'm Jill Dill, Assistant um, Director of Business Development for Bermuda Tourism Authority. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this uh, seminar today. It's very exciting for us in Bermuda to be on this stage and to hopefully acquaint you with what all the things we have to offer. I know there are some uh, individuals in this uh, in room today who are very familiar, recently have visited, so we'll get to hear a little bit more about their experience a little later on. So basically, um, why I'm here today goes back a few years. Um, Bermuda was a very successful destination for the America's Cup event. Uh, as part of the America's Cup event, there was a specific super yacht program that was a part of the actual race. Um, we were fortunate enough to have had one of the most successful super yacht programs as far as the America's Cup goes. Based on that success, it was realized and acknowledged by our government and our people that Bermuda had a very special opportunity to become a destination um, and a super yacht destination, whether it was for just for visiting or actual charters. As a result of that um, success, we determined that legislation needed to be changed so that it, you could legally charter in Bermuda. Prior to that, we were, were not on the radar. We didn't have the le legislation in place to do that. As a result, we have the legislation in place. 2020 was a big year for us, and 
then we all know COVID happened. So, so much for all those efforts, we got that far and then things are quiet. Uh, thankfully, um, because of COVID and um, the ability of some owners, they chose to actually bring their vessels to Bermuda and ride out a lot, a lot of COVID during that time. So it did work a little bit in our favor, but now we want a greater audience to become more acquainted with us as a destination. So why Bermuda? Someone said they were gonna ask a tough question. I'd like to put to you the attributes and assets that we have as a country. We are 21 square miles, very small island, but we pack a big punch as an island. We have a very deep and rich maritime history. Um, we were discovered in 1609, and um, they were, uh, those that actually were coming to the island were heading off to elsewhere, I won't say where, and they decided they wanted to stay in Bermuda. So as a result, we've been operating and building as an island since 1609. Um, we have world-class sailing events in addition to the um, events that I've mentioned before. We've got a sail GP event, we have a Newport to Bermuda races, uh, Antigua to Bermuda race is gonna be reinstituted again. We have PGA um, golfing events, et cetera, so very high caliber um, international events that go on in Bermuda. So if you've heard of, heard of any of these um, organizations like the PGA or whatnot, we are a world-class destination that hosts world-class events. Geographically, we are conveniently situated between the Mediterranean and the Caribbean. Um, if you take a flight to Bermuda from New York, we're an hour and 30 minutes away. I don't think a lot of people actually realize how close we are. As far as cruising is concerned, most yachts that are making their migration south to the Caribbean or away from the Caribbean to the Med and North America, Bermuda is on their radar. It's on your, the pattern of that boat traveling. Now it's actually an opportunity for us to ensure that not only us being geographically located, but we actually have things to do and things to engage clients, whether owners of boats or their um, yacht guests. We have just tons of things to do in Bermuda and I'll elaborate as we go on. Um, <clears throat> we have two very world-class marinas. One is at the Hamilton Prince Princess, which you see situated there. That is in the central part of the island and it's our main business hub. Bermuda, in addition to being um, a subtropical island that has the beautiful pink beaches, uh, lovely crystal clear waters, we also are a very well-respected global business uh, jurisdiction for legal, for finance, for insurance, and now even FinTech. So in addition to coming to Bermuda and having a very um, leisure vacation, you are actually embedded in an island that has a hub and a pulse of the best in business that is occurring around the world. So chances are in a restaurant or uh, anywhere that you are visiting on the island, you are gonna be in connect with people who are literally moving and shaking global business um, around the world. So we're, we're not isolated as a tourist destination. You are actually embedded in the inner workings of, of the country. Um, we also are English speaking, uh, our, mo our money is uh, dollar, dollar to US dollar, so we're tagged to the US dollar. So the value that you're getting is gonna be um, similar and very uh, familiar to you. Um, open air experiences, um, as Bert mentioned, everybody has a beautiful beach, so we have lovely beaches, lovely restaurants, we have seven um, golf courses, two of which are championship courses. So we're very familiar with a high level of golfing and a high level of experiential um, activities for you. Our diving is second to none, and I know some of these islands also have very uh, good diving attributes. We have 300 shipwrecks under um, record, and there are shipwrecks that were uh, galleons 15, back in the 1500s, 1600s. No ships really have been sank just to be a snorkel thing. These are real ships that got wrecked and are sitting at the bottom of our um, ocean. So in our inventory, we're able to take quite large vessels um, and the two marinas that um, we have, Hamilton Princess, which I mentioned, and the St. George's Marina and Super Yacht Dock, that is actually in our um, town of St. George's, which is Bermuda's um, UNESCO World Heritage Site. So in addition to having all the amenities that a Super Yacht would want, 
it also um, it sits in a very historic area. So when you sail in, history just unveils itself the minute you step off the boat. Um, we do have additional super yacht berths across the island, not all with the amenities that um, St. George's Marina and Hamilton Princess have, but both of those marinas have a world-class um, hotels at them. The St. Regis is our newest hotel, so we're combining luxury of a hotel with the accessibility of a super yacht dock. So. Uh, again, world-class events, um, list is too long to go into, but PGA Tour, Rugby, tri World Triathlon, most of our events are on a world stage, world scale. And why now? Because I'm here and I'm begging you to come. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Bermuda needs to be back on the conversation list, the consideration list with super yacht and chartering. We are, have a lot of vessels that come by, they bunker, they may stay one or two days, but there is so much to see in this island um, and it's very accessible. A, a number of anchorages, so we absolutely feel that there is a need to educate and really acquaint influences like yourself with what the island has to offer. Um, obviously the legislation I've spoken to, um, we have a very simple tax structure. I've heard a lot of technical information today, which is very, very educational for me. Ours is just very flat and um, just straightforward. So there won't be too, too much technical information that you would need to get if you were inquiring about chartering in Bermuda. And so the differentiator, there you go. I, I don't really need to say much more. Um, personal safety is very high on our list. It's a very safe island. Um, we have customizable itineraries, very bespoke island, very sophisticated, has a mix of the Caribbean, North America, and Europe all in one. And it seems like, how can an island be like that? It's just literally in our DNA, it was how we were formed. So there's something familiar for everyone, but also, also still a world of part when you're there. And this is uh, our town, our city of Hamilton at night. The Hamilton Princess, you can see there, a world-renowned hotel. And everything is at your fingertips the minute you step off your yacht. You're, there's no section segmented just for uh, visitors or just for business. You, you're going to see me on the street very easily. So I'm going to now show a video of um, some endorsers that I'm very grateful for. We hosted a number of charter brokers to Bermuda earlier this year, and this is what they had to say. We're here really to, uh, to celebrate and find out much more uh, about Bermuda as a charter destination. For the first time we've been able to actually hear from those in the industry that influence. We are very much interested in what they have to say so that those selling our destination on our behalf really have the tools and the information to help people make a decision for us. We've had a wonderful round table where lots of brokers have been here talking about uh, what opportunities lie ahead. Having all of these folks come here representing all the major powerhouses in the industry, them being able to see Bermuda, really feel it and appreciate it, it's just, it's, it's massive for us in Bermuda. Just been a dream come true. It's been an absolute delight to discover everything that Bermuda has to offer. There is a lot to offer here, especially for those that might be adventurers or historians or really like to balance the water play with being ashore. There's seven golf courses, five-star hotels, the restaurants are amazing, uh, the beaches are absolutely stunning. It's a very, very safe island that they have very little crime. So I think it's just about educating our clients and making sure the word gets out about what there is to do in Bermuda. There's definitely potential for a lot more yachts to come here. It's good to see how the islands are embracing the opportunity for super yachts to come to the island. I think that it's the world's best kept secret. I don't think enough people know how great Bermuda is, otherwise they'd all be flocking here.
we're delighted that the Bermuda Tourist Authority have hosted us uh, in a fantastic way over the last three days. And I have to say, having been here myself for the first time, uh, this is a remarkable place to come. I think the future potential uh, for Bermuda as a charter destination is outstanding. People are uh, looking for different places to go on Bermuda fits perfectly for what they're looking for. If you want to be somewhere different and be ahead of the curve, Bermuda is a place. If you haven't discovered it before, you are really missing out. In Bermuda, it's a bit different. You come and have a look and see for yourself. You will not be disappointed. Thank you, everybody. Well Wait, oh, oh. You're not gonna, you're not get away that easily. Um, you kind of blew past taxes and all that. Um, if you could just summarize, is there sales tax? on the charter hire, is there a uh, duty on uh, foreign flag vessels that they have to pay to come in? Do they need a charter license? Yes. Is, are there any immigration barriers uh, for foreign crew coming into those waters? Uh, you do need a charter license. Up to number nine. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do need a charter license. Um, everything is very well organized. Um, we have yacht brokers, or I'm sorry, yacht management companies, um, in particular Bermuda Yacht Services. Uh, the gentleman, Mark Soares, who was featured in there, that would be your first point of contact and everything is laid out. You, we have a full concierge service, so there's no guessing, no wondering what next. You are handheld from the minute you're interested in visiting Bermuda or vessels visiting Bermuda. We have that all under control. The tax that was mentioned, it's just a straight tax, straight charter tax. There is um, a fee that would be paid uh, per foot of your yacht to the marina, all of that is very straightforward and is outlined by a company like Bermuda Yacht Services. So very handheld, very bespoke attention to detail and whatever your requir requirements are, we're a very flexible island, we're very well connected. So with regards to uh, a vessel and its flagging or information like that, it's very accessible to you through us. I'm gonna ask the same, qu I mean, we want this to be in as, in as interactive as possible. And so are there any questions quickly because we're kind of like running over already and that's, uh, Bert's gonna put a chain on me or something. It's 6% of the charter. 6%, okay, pretty reason, reasonable. And the last question I wanna ask is this, and that is that you know, you're all looking for business to come to your facilities or to your country or whatever. You, just, you wanna be a charter destination. This entire room is driven toward uh, putting yachts where and charter clients where the charter business is and we have presentations uh, often from as far away as Tahiti and such yet those destinations are never able really to develop as, as uh, true charter destinations okay so what is it that we can encourage and tell our clients either charter clients to want to go to Bermuda and charter or what is it we tell our owners, our charter managers, in order to say, yeah, that you definitely need to position the boat there. Because if you don't have the boat there, you're not gonna need charters. You don't have any charters, you're not gonna have boats there. So it's kind of like this, this uh, chicken and egg kind of a thing. What, what can they say to their customers to encourage them to go to Bermuda? Uh, for us in uh, Bermuda, we want to develop relationships first. So developing relationships with yourselves is absolutely a start. Hearing the needs of your clients or the preferences of your clients and being able to educate you and those owners as to how Bermuda can suit your needs. It is a bit of a chicken and egg situation with regards, well, am I gonna get charters out there or am I not? I challenge and I encourage uh, those of you who are very close to your owners if your owners are looking to do something different and just want to get a feel for something different, the next time they're on their boat, they can charter or have their boat go anywhere for them. Have them come out to Bermuda. Have them meet people like myself so that they can really see what the, what the island has to offer. And relationally, we can sort of connect them with the experiences that they're interested in and showcase the variety of bespoke experiences that exist from history to art to um, water activities, we have it all and we do it at a very high level and a very bespoke level. We don't need a lot of boats in Bermuda. The island is small and we pride ourselves on the uh, very um, sort of just private, the island is almost yours type of feel. So you're not gonna see 20 to 30 boats all next to each other. It's, it's a very bespoke island and we wanna preserve that. Okay, Fabulous. thank you, uh, Jill, um, and um, it's very great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you.
I, I, before Simone gets up, and I think Simone's next. Yes. OK, good. And I, we kind of also blew past uh, Graham Lord's introduction. I want you to know Graham is up here to be the naysayer, the doubter, the one who's asking you about the technical stuff at your facilities and all that. But you, could you put a tight on Graham right now? Because I want to make sure everybody sees that. <laughs> Graham, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Graham um, Fairport Yacht Support, great company, acquired by IGY, acquired by Marine Max, and acquired by Allstate Insurance, and he is now the Mayhem spokesman <laughs> for Allstate. Show him, Graham. Show him. There you go. All right, so that's Mr. Mayhem over here. So anyway, Simone, please. Sure. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to IYBA for having us here this morning to be able to share with you. I'm going to make it very short and sweet, and I'm actually going to flip the script on my presentation and ask questions of you, because I'm actually an infant in an industry that we'd like to develop, we have very little knowledge about, and what we've been doing is pounding the pavement and getting the advice from experts so that we know exactly what to place to make our facility what you expect for your clients. So I just want to share with you today a little bit of Belize. Time to dust off your passport. <laughs> it's time to be face to face with your friends. It's time to leave slippers and sweatpants behind. Because there are adventures waiting ahead. It's time to make this year everything last year wasn't. It's time to grab life in Belize. All right, excellent. That was our theme. That is our theme. You are all invited to come and grab life in Belize. Um, what I did today, because I know several of my counterparts have beautiful beaches, I showed you my jungles, <laughs> because they don't have that. <laughs> I also showcased my Mayan ruins, which they also don't have. So, you know, those are some of our bragging points here today. But um, what, what I did say is I really do want to flip the script. Um, we are on an in front. I can tell you what we've been doing to advance the industry in Belize. We have several private public partnerships that we're engaged in to develop marinas. So if anybody here is a developer in the room and would like to speak to me about owning a piece of the pie, would love to have that chat. But aside from that, we are a difficult destination. And I'm gonna say we're difficult because we don't have a knowledge of the industry because it has grown organically. And as such, we've reached out to the exports. We invited UK Hydrographic Office to come in and fix a challenge that we were having with regards to bathymetrics and how can you approach Belize? Because we are a very beautiful country because our country is very well managed and protected. We are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We have the most beautiful living barrier reef in the world. We have four, no, we have three of the four atolls that are located in the Western Hemisphere. So we definitely have very strict rules in place to manage our 46% of lands and marine reserves. But with that being said, we also want to invite you to experience our country. And we are taking the necessary steps, so we've worked on our approaches. I got asked a question about fuel, and I have the response for you, so like I'm, I'm very quick to respond. We don't have offshore fuel services because we are in a marine protected area. Most of our waters are marine protected. Um, we can make bunkerage available to you, so that's a facility that's offered. We go through an EIA for you to be approved. But these are the things that make our destination special. I have an entire season where you don't have to go to the Maldives, but you can swim with whale sharks. You understand? That's an amazing experience. Like, where do you get to do that and then also get to experience a Maya ruin in the same trip? 
You understand? Those are my key selling points. And I want for everyone in this room to be able to share those selling points. And I mean, I see Mr. Nag over there. He knows what Belize is all about. You can speak to him. He could tell you why he's an investor in Belize and continues to invest in Belize. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some, can I see a show of hands? Who has been to Belize? Excellent, yay. And how many of you think it's so fabulous? Excellent, and for the ones who put their hand down, what's up? <laughs> no, and I'm asking a serious question because I want to know how can we fix that experience for you because I'm in tourism, I'm the Belize Tourism Board. Most of you in this industry, you're gonna be speaking with the Port Authority, you're gonna be speaking with um, in Marby. If you're looking for a registration flag, they're the ones who you speak to. If you're looking for how to enter an approach, you speak to that. We've also fixed some of the problems and challenges that we've been having, and we work, in, we work now with C-Click. So if you're familiar with SailClear, anybody here familiar with SailClear? That's the pre-arrival notification system for the Caribbean. It's a custom system that you declare. We've actually made that mandatory. It has all the fees outlined, so just with one click of a button, your vessel is registered and you don't have to continue to do that process every single time that you're coming to the country because it's there already. But why Belize for chartering? Because we're awesome. And everybody's going to say that, but like we're really awesome. So <laughs> in Bermuda, she may not have a safe harbor. That's something that you might have to work on. <laughs> but we are fortunate enough to have several inlets and coves that we can channel your yachts to. We're fortunate to have Rio Dulce that's able to hold some of them as a base. And then that entire Central American chartering experience is something that's new and off the beaten path that you can enjoy. Um, why did luxury peak during the pandemic? because people wanted to get away. They wanted to do something different. They wanted to go to places that they realized that they needed to get to before something cut their life short, because that was the reality that we were all faced with at that time. So I invite you all to experience Belize. I know Tropical Ocean Airways is about to come. You know, we're working on some seaplanes, right? Right, OK. <laughs> I'm here to do the job of the ministry and promote. But I would love for my panelists, and I know Bob has some serious questions, and I hope I'm able to answer, and I will make a disclaimer right now. If I don't know the answer, I'll be very sure to get you that answer, because I promise that I deliver. I'm going to throw it over to Graham. Simone, I've been fortunate to visit all the destinations, and they have a few things in common. Uh, they are adventure destinations, great uh, biodiversity, great diving, great sports fishing, but that's for a private yacht. We're at a, a charter um, conference. What do we need to do to obtain a charter license? Uh, what is the tax? We're going to ask the same questions already. Taxation and any visa, question, visa concerns we should be aware of. All right. So for me, I'm not as highly tax structured as the other countries. I actually only have a 1.5% capital gains tax, but you do have to apply for a charter license, which is done through the Ministry of Tourism in the form of the Belize Tourism Board, who I represent. The cost for a charter license is actually $12.50 US. <laughs> like, seriously, like we, we need to do some work there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, we do work along with the Port Authority, and they do assess fees on the vessel. Um, dependent on the size of your vessel, if you're 50 gross tons and over, you will also have to work with a shipping agent. And then we also require that if you are not familiar with Belize territorial waters, we do have a pilotage license in place where you will need to work with somebody locally to bring that boat into the water. And I'll tell you that that's the best road, because Preservation is our key, and you do not want to get, what's the, what's the name of it when you get stuck on the reef? Bad uh, Grounding, yeah, that's a bad <laughs> word. Like, that's a bad word in this industry, grounding, right? And I have so many beautiful reefs, that's why we went so far as to work with the UK Hydrographic Office to make sure that you guys know that the approaches are there, because grounding is a very bad word, and if you ground in Belize, leave your boat and get out of there. <laughs> 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 
Any question? Yes, we have a question right here. here. How much are the pilotage fees? Pardon me? How much is the pilot? Um, we, it's done through the BPA on the Belize Port Authority website. Everything is listed. So what I can do is I can take a card and I can forward you all of that information. But um, on average, the entire process to have a charter come into Belize with all fees, pays, pilotage, etc., is about three to 5,000 US. So if you're looking for long-term, having it based there for the season, sending people up to Isla Mujeres, sending people down to Roatan, doing a channel pass through and going around to Costa Rica, we're very economical. And I mean, APA was thrown out a lot. I mean, Rome, how much is it for like bananas? Like you get eight for 50 cents US. Yeah, 50 cents. All right. So provisioning is actually very affordable in Belize and we don't have to import anything in terms of that so you know the cost of provisioning is actually kept down where that's concerned and i mean we have beautiful people beautiful culture amazing experiences it's definitely something that you can do to develop your travel itineraries and your itineraries don't have to be only sea based because i mean we have wonderful diving we have beautiful turtles we have manatees we have the great blue hole, we, we just had the wick concrete which we recently sunk. So shipwrecks have also been added to our things to do, but inland is just a world waiting to be explored. Yep. Excellent, thank you, Saman. Uh, I'd like to just ask um, one more question. Sure. Is, what is your current greatest capacity in terms of yachts visiting? All right, so right now my highest fleet is the Aggressor. They're about 34 meters. 34 meters. Yeah, right now. So I really need your business. I really need to speak to the ones that have the bigger boats so I know what to put in place. I just got approved um, super yacht Anchorage in Placencia because Placencia is a destination, for those of you who've been to Belize, has been developing organically, but it's like or coconut grove. You understand? That's exactly the feel. Placencia has a coconut grove vibe, and you'll definitely enjoy that. Paul, do we have anybody else? So just know it's between $3,012.50 and $5,012.50. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Emphasizing on the $12.50. <laughs> Thank you, Simone. Let's hear it for Thank Simone. You. I think I lost my notes, but I think Pedro's next, right? Yep. There he is, Pedro Abella. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. And I'm from Costa Rica, the Pura Vida style. I guess a lot of you have been in Costa Rica, so now we are really, really excited and very happy to let you know that this year, 2022, June, we got the approval for do charities in Costa Rica. After pushing a lot of years, we're just starting with that, uh, and we are 100% ready. All the documents, everything is ready for that. What can I tell you about Costa Rica? You know, now it's an ecotourism uh, exciting destination for sure. And uh, we are Marina Bella Golfit, which is what I represent. I'm the managing director of that. We are in South Pacific of Costa Rica, really next to Panama border. We are the first port for entrance in Costa Rica. And we are the only uh, area, only port that the uh, uh, jet transport vessels can come, which is important. So what do we have over there? In Golfito and around that, we have, we are surrounded 360 degrees per protected areas. We are in the rainforest completely. We have the Gulf of Dulce, which is 750 square kilometers of responsible fishing, sport fishing. We have Corcovado Park, National Park. We have Isla del Caño Park. We have Isla del Coco, you know about that, Cocos Island, which is, was the most intense uh, biodiversity area. And in, uh, in Golfo Dulce, which is right next to Marina Valle Golfito, was declared that half, because they have the 2.5% of the world's biodiversity right in that place. 
So it's a lot of people to do studies, uh, organizations and everything is good for that. And now we can do charters there. How can we do charters in Costa Rica? Maybe better, I, I want, sorry, I want to show you a video of what the area is for. That's Marino Valle Golfito, all that you could see there. We have it for you. Remember, we are the happiest people on the planet. You don't have an army, do you? Yeah, the only problem with that, you, you have, have to be army. careful because it's contagious. <laughs> <laughs> really, you can be more happy than you are right now. So just to, to let you know and uh, talk about charter, we have two steps to get the charter license. The first one you can do, in, you don't have to be in Costa Rica to, to get it, uh, which is four simple steps. The first one is to fill the form, which is in the website of the uh, tourist department in Costa Rica. Then you have to send the certification of uh, registration of this vessel, the proof of the insurance for charter, and to do dockage in one of our local marinas, of course. That's it. When that, which, which by the way, you can do it through Marina Valle Golfito, we can help all the process. Our professional concierge department can help you with that. Now, you have to do it one month in advance. Probably will be less, but I prefer to tell you 30 days in advance, you can get the charter license. Once you got the charter license, the second step is to go to Costa Rica, of course, and you can do the clearance, you know, the, uh, immigration, customs, which, by the way, is on site. We have it on site. The authorities, right there. And we we'll take 24 hours. That's it. You can get that. And then, of course, the fees for charters, which is 2.5% of the cost of the charter. That's all what you need to be there and enjoy Costa Rica. Uh, the, the charter license is for per one year, expiring one year, and then you can do that. I mean, that's, that's all what you need. So I guarantee you that in a month plus one day on site, you can get the, the license. You can start doing charters all around Costa Rica. 
Pedro, you touched on something that I think is important operationally, that it's the pickup and drop-off point for transport ships, which we all know is not a science, so there's always a holding time between. I would think that it's a no-brainer if you could fill that space up with a charter. What, um, what do you have in availability for dockage while you're holding there? And if, if for example, a yacht is coming from Australia, is getting dropped off there, and we can pick up a charter, um, can the crew reposition? Can the yacht get uh, ready to, to be charter ready after just doing a long voyage uh, on, on board a transport ship? Okay, if I understand you, good. I mean, uh, once you be there, you can do charter immediately. Immigration ways is 90 days mm -hmm. for, for people on, on charge. That's is, and then you have to go out for 72 hours and come back if you want to do it, but you can change the crew and everything, so whatever is for 90 days. But the, the charter by itself is for one year and extended for one more year over there. And what size slips do you have available? For we, are, we have 35 slips from uh, 42 up to 70 and 14 slips up to 350 feet. And provisioning and supplies? No problem. Everything you need. Also, it's, it's important maybe to know when I spoke about the size of the yachts because Golfito, which I, I don't know. I know that you don't know the name, but very soon you have in your memory. You remember that. Marina Valle Golfito is, Golfito means little golf. It's, okay, so we are a golf within a golf. So we have no breakwater. So the, our breakwater is natural, protected for that. We have the depth enough for that. So it's really smooth to park the, the jet and everything. So the maneuver for everything for the <coughs> mega yachts is really, really easy. So that's where some mega yacht marina. Of course, Nigeria marinas, Bert is here with us. So with all the uh, benefits and all the uh, amenities that an IGY marina has. Pedro, you went through that entire uh, presentation without mentioning the fishing in Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the fishing. Yeah, but you yeah. And we, I had a problem, you know, when we did the marina, because we want to have a super yacht marina, but also we have more than 500 world records in sport fishing in the south of Costa Rica. So we are, of course, open, and we have a lot of sport fishing with us. So it's a, it's a, what? a marina for the two things, you know, cruise, for mega yachts, for charters, and sport fishing. We have a lot of people very interested to go there in a protected area. Again, just to confirm that. It's a lot of species that you cannot take out of the water. All the uh, billfish, you cannot do it. And then, a lot, another, like tuna and everything, we have hundreds of thousands that you can do it really to enjoy. We have three sport fishing tournaments a year. Actually, the next one, all of you are invited. It's 2 and 3 of December 2nd and 3rd will be a billfish tournament. So, and that will be very successful. And the past was very successful because you really fish when you go there. Pedro, could you expand uh, to the yacht managers and uh, the benefits of refurbishing the yacht in certain aspects? The benefit of what? The benefit of um, duties on certain equipment? Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. As you can do, you have to do dockage in our marina or in any local marina. With the law, with the charter law came also uh, every part that you need for repair of something is approved that you can bring it to Costa Rica tax-free. That is another benefit that came with the law. Very important. So any repair, not just parts, mechanical parts or whatever, even the accessories or FF&E, anything you need for the yacht will be tax-free to come to Costa Rica, and you can do that. It's another benefit that we have. Thank That's you. great to hear. Thanks, Pedro. Um, let's have it for um, Pedro Avalara. Thank you. Um, I once played golf at uh, Los Sueños, yeah. and there's these signs here that say, don't bother the monkeys. Then and I didn't realize what that meant was, but when you hit your ball, monkeys come running out of the tropical rainforest and grab them and run back. They must have <laughs> these huge collections of golf balls in there someplace, I don't know. Anyway, um, guess who's up? You're the one. This is Bruce Walker about Turks and Caicos. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Bruce. I'm the general manager of uh, 
Blue Haven Marina in Turks and Caicos. I uh, only dis can only disagree with Pedro on one point. Uh, he said that he's the, the happiest man in the, well, the happiest people. Happiest people. I, I think we are. I'm the happiest person because <laughs> I've been running this marina for two days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when it comes to a lot of technical questions, I think I'll be able to answer 90 percent of the questions you're going to ask. But I've got my wingman over there, Luis and uh, and Philip. So um, I think so there might be some technical questions coming, especially from your side, uh, Graham, and I'm going to be turning to them for some, <clears throat> some advice on that one. But we did bring a presentation. That I think it's a seven-pager. I don't know if you could bring it up on the screen. There we go. That's, um, that's what our marina looks like. Um, it's brand new, by the way. It's all glistening. It was destroyed in the 2017 hurricane, and it's just been rebuilt completely. And if you can go to the next slide, there we go. Um, and there's a, lot, there's a lot of facts on these on the slide. If you can just have a look at them yourselves, and uh, rather than me um, speaking about them, we've got 50 slips out front, and we've got another 36 slips out the back. We can take uh, maximum lengths of over 200 foot. Um, it's a very easy to navigate channel. We have uh, markers down the channel as well, just to help people get through the channel. I think you can go to the next uh, slide. There we go. You can see our utilities. Uh, we have everything you need, electricity, sewerage. Um, we've got, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we've got an on-site um, on uh, market where you can get your um, delicatessen and um, uh, supermarket provisions. Um, a marina depth, we've got a, a mean low water level of uh, 12 foot, so 12 foot draft, so we can get some really big boats in there. And the services we offer, of course, um, our concierge service, uh, please just look through all the things we can do. Obviously, we've got an on-site, uh, we can clear customs and excise. We, uh, we, we've got a coffee shop, you know, we've also, we also own the actual resort, the Blue Haven Resort. So. You can make use of those facilities as well, five-star facilities, you know, um, swim-up swim bars, two restaurants, spa, you, know, you name it. It's, it's, really, it's really luxurious. And there's a letter. Thank you very much, Philip, for writing the letter for me, but very well written. And uh, besides that, um, I'm, I'm available to answer any questions that you'd like to ask. Um, I think we, in terms of charters, we we ideally situated geographically, but um, I'll wait for those questions to come through. Uh, so for the benefit of the group, uh, Grace Bay Beach is considered one of the finest beaches in the world, which uh, is a bit of a plug for you guys. Having done charters uh, uh, in um, Turks and Caicos, it's a natural continuation from the Bahamas to cruise into the Turks, Turks and Caicos. The, um, the shortfall was always getting into a, uh, a safe harbor because there is a, an enormous groundswell that you have to consider uh, most of the time there. So uh, what is available size-wise the, in the marina? And uh, the same question we've asked everybody, <coughs> charter regulations, uh, VAT. Right here. Um, Graham, thanks for the question. We've got 72 slips in total. We can take boats of up to over, over 200 foot. In fact, uh, Louise can help me out, but I think we can go right up to 250 foot. Yeah, depending on the draft system, 250 foot is doable. Okay, there we go. 700-foot side side is the very easy maneuvering. Great. Thank you, thank you, um, Louise. We've also, I think the question was um, pricing. There's no tax in Turks and Caicos, which is wonderful. Everybody's been talking about tax. It's one thing we can say is no tax. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we... Um, there, there's a cruising uh, fee of, of $100 for a week or $300 for 90 days. Wow. And is there any restrictions on chartering in Turks and Caicos? Uh, can you help me out there, please? Any restrictions on chartering? Uh, uh, do, we, uh, do we have to require a license or is there any... Uh, we can just show up and start chartering just if not? The, just the cruising permit of, of $300 and we can also clear customs and immigration on site. Activities to 
Thank you, Philip. Well, I think uh, what Philip is saying there is that we, we really, it's a, it's a hassle-free, what we want is a hassle-free, pleasant experience for, um, for our guests coming in. And the airport's only 15 minutes away. It's a small island. Um, it's the most beautiful uh, island up <laughs> that I've ever been to. I know there's some be people have been showing some beautiful places. Um, and we also have the third largest reef nearby in the world, uh, plus 100, um, 100 islands. We're part of an archipelago, archipelago of eight islands, but um, there's 100 um, named islands as well around. So you can really, when you come out of our marina, you can, you can turn to the left and you have the most beautiful beach in the world. You can turn to the right and you have all the islands to explore. Bruce, we have a question in the back of the room here. Yeah, sure. Uh, you pretty much just answered it. I was wondering what we could offer our clients for a week trip there in itinerary or what that would look like if they would just sit at the dock the whole time and experience the small island, but as you say, you've got other places to go. Absolutely. There's, there's so much to do. And the most beautiful beach, and the Grace Bay Beach, I think uh, Graham just alluded to it as well, and of course all the different caves and islands. Hang on, Andy. I'm coming. Question over there. It's okay, Paul. But we're buying more time because because Bert asked a question that took a long answer. So we'll no. <laughs> credit for that. I I don't know if it's long or not. Um, for the sake of clarity, um, can a foreign vessel come in to the Turks and Caicos and do a charter without leaving the island or the territory or country? Ye yes. Um, yes, that is correct. Uh, at the f at the fee that of course that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so they only need a cruising uh, fee to be paid, and they can do charters there? That's correct. Wow. Got to like it. <laughs> Any other questions? It's all very easy. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Graham, you don't have any more well, questions? I think ending on a wow is a pretty, place, <laughs> <laughs> pretty good, good place to go. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank uh, you. I appreciate oh. it. I'll take this, Bob. <laughs> Why don't you take it? You guys all finished? Yep. I think, I, I, I mean, I, I have a oh, closing wait, wait, comment wait, wait, on this. Stay here. You'll, you'll be all right. What I would encourage all of these, these islands uh, is to try partner up with each other a little bit. Uh, that's an obs the observation I have. You know, it's very difficult to sell a charter as that is the sole destination. It's one of the advantages that the rest of the Caribbean have, that you can bounce from island to island, to experience different territories. So I just open that as, as a consideration, is how do you create a, say, a trifecta type of destination to make it really interesting for your charterers? Uh, I think we've heard today that everybody's welcoming uh, and that the process is quite simple. So I think there's a great opportunity in a year. Uh, I hope that the rest of the charter and I think could the secret to it is to have a collaborative effort between the markets and the destinations to promote, educate. Heather was on there talking about education and all that. That's what it's all about. And we really need new destinations, okay? Absolutely. But uh, let's face it, our owners are going to go back to the Eastern and Western Med, they're going to go to Florida Bahamas, they're going to go to New England, and go to the Pacific Northwest. So creating a market is the secret here. It can be done. All right. So, Paul. And Central America, I mean, it's a big, it's a big place. There's a lot, of, a lot of space to cover, a lot of distance to cover to get from one point to the other. But with Belize aggressively promoting charter, with Panama looking to bring people there, with Costa Rica passing new legislation, welcoming charter. Now Central America becomes a seasonal destination that maybe you can sew together you know, a very good system. For sure. You got Kitty, right? I'm sorry? Kitty. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> if I get you guys to stop talking, I can let her start. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank on you. the destinations Thank group. You. Thank you. So you guys know that uh, EBA's purpose is to promote professionalism and cooperation in the industry. Uh, we're not a political organization, but we are affected by what goes on in politics. Um, I wanted to give a few minutes to one of our own to talk to you a little bit about the issues that we're facing here locally and the solutions at hand. Kitty McGowan. Well, thank Rock you star. very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I hate to be that speaker in between a day of, of programming and lunch, so I will be brief and uh, and to the point. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, and the International Yacht Brokers Association for allowing me a quick minute. It's been I've been in the outing industry in some form or fashion for over 35 years, and seeing all these lovely destinations that I've had the grace to be able to spend time in is a wonderful thing. But I'm here to talk today about the city of Fort Lauderdale. 
right here where so many of us are based. This is the yachting center, capital of the world, Venice of America, and a lot of you know me. I've known a lot of you for decades. We don't want to say how many decades, but uh, I've been blessed to be a part of this industry for a very long time, and I know a lot of you through my role as the president of the U.S. Super Yacht Association, and now I'm taking another job, which I didn't have enough on my plate already. Um, I threw my hat in the ring to run for the city of Fort Lauderdale District 4 Commission uh, seat right here in the heart, not right here, just on the other side, uh, the heart and soul of our city. And you're gonna say, wait, you know, it really doesn't matter. Why does something like that matter to me? I mean, I'm only one person. I mean, it's, it's just one vote, um, but it does matter. And it matters more than you realize because everything local directly impacts everything we do. We're the number one employer in the city of Fort Lauderdale, and yet we don't matter. We are not recognized, we are not prioritized as an industry, and that's the very reason I jumped in. I'm running against six other people. That tells you how critical this one seat is. And we all know the transportation issues, the infrastructure challenges, we all know about how all of those things are happening, but this city doesn't just impact this this role in the, as a commissioner doesn't just impact the city. 70% of the yachts that entered the United States come in through Port Everglades. Now, I grew up here. I remember I, I learned to water ski at Marina Bay. I remember when there were islands in the, in the intercoastal. But now Fort Lauderdale is part of the sixth largest metropolitan area in the country. Wrap your arms around that for one second. Six largest, New York, Chicago, LA, Dallas, Houston, Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. So unfortunately, our leadership has mired in old world thinking. They think small. We aren't a small little sleepy town anymore. We are a very large growing metropolitan area. But we have totally ne neglected so many things and now we need a larger perspective. As a marine industry person and protector for 35 years, uh, as I said, they don't care about our boats here in Fort Lauderdale. We, I was here since we stole it, Jeff, fair and square from Miami. Now, we're about to lose that number one employer in our city. Uh, by evidence of how many of you are water from property here in Fort Lauderdale? A recent regulation came out that said, it, luckily we were able to squash it, but it's still hanging, that if you own a, a dock, 100 feet, one vessel per 100 feet on top of a lot of other things that are designed to not make it possible for you to really enjoy the waterway and the lifestyle that is our city. Now you're paying tens of thousands of dollars in taxes for that waterfront slip. Now you won't be able to do it. Another reason, there's no plan to dredge or fix the seawalls in our water to clean the water. None of those things are happening. And let's not even talk about the bridge slash tunnel. I mean, all of our industry is just west of that tunnel, not to mention all the waterfront properties are back there that are now being choked off to access to the ocean because of that bridge or the lack of a bridge. Um, we've been talking about this 10 years ago. I read the study, very, very detailed study. 10 years later, we still haven't made a decision. Now we're gonna study another study. So what we need is, is ab absolute impact from our industry. Your voice counts. How many of you are registered vote? Okay, very good. Well, those of you that are not registered to vote and m live in the city, you have to live in District 4 to be able to vote for me. But if you, ev if you don't, if you go to vote, the number 4kitty.com, you can register to vote right there. The last day to register is next Tuesday, so you still have time, but it does matter. And I bring an innovative and large view approach. I've worked in, Ta in Tallahassee, DC, I've worked with every the alphabet soup um, organization out there, and I know how to pull things together and make things happen. Now, there's lots of plans, but now is a time for action. Our industry has been completely dismissed so many times because we don't get out the vote. We always make it somebody else's job. Oh, EBO will take it, or USSA will handle it, or MIASF will fix our problems. No, these are our problems to fix, and it's your job to get out there and vote because your voice matters. I would say vote early, vote often, but that would be very not cool. Uh, 
<laughs> and uh, so go, uh, go to voteforkitty.com. And you can help, even if you don't live in District 4, you can help me spread the word. I have pages on every social media uh, platform out there. Tell your friends that might live in the district. Let me put up a sign or donate. I'm facing pretty strong headwinds, but we need someone strong with a big vision that knows how to pull it together, who has our backs to navigate through this next this next year. So go to voteforkitty.com. Thank you very much. Now, you guys, go to lunch. I'll make this quick. You've all been absolutely awesome. Go get some food. Um, the time to come back. You've got one, you've got one fifteen back at one fifteen. <laughs>